Somebody once told me, <laughs> get busy living or get busy dying. Welcome to Get Busy Living with Clark Bartram. Man, I am fired up for today's episode because you're going to learn some things about me that you probably didn't know yet. You probably didn't know that I played Batman in one of the most amazing cult classics that ever has been put on YouTube is where it started. And I've got the man that made it happen here today. He's more than a director. He's more than a creative genius. He's my friend. He's my dear friend. And I love this brother so much. And I'm so glad that you're here today. Sandy Calora is here. And we're going to talk about a lot of stuff, including Batman Dead End. What's up, man? <laughs> what else would we talk about besides <laughs> Batman Dead End and fitness? Yeah, that's it. Because, so. you know, Jim did bring something up. He goes, you know, Sandy's made a really good transformation himself. I mean, you were not in great shape when we first met. No. And you're in fantastic shape now. No, oh, dude, I'm in, yeah, I, I feel great. I, so I, let's start there, right? How does someone make that transformation? What was the line in the sand for you? What caused you to go, man, I got to do something different because this ain't, this ain't how to get busy living. It was when you told me that there was no reason for me to be carrying around that extra weight. You know, it's like you're obviously a super athletic and physical guy. You had seen pictures of me from playing football and surfing and, all those Shredded things, abs, yeah. all of it. Everyone yeah. says that. I got pictures. I was in shape. I'm like, yeah. So when I busted me the out receipts. my modeling portfolio, yeah. <laughs> you, you saw what I used to look like. So, um, and yeah, it was just like, you know what? This dude's right, you know? And after my mom passed, which as you know, happened right, I mean, days after the movie was done and was shown, um, I just decided that there was going to be like a period for me to grieve and then I was going to get in shape. And you, uh, yeah, you just basically told me, you said that, it, you know, it's, it's what I like people to know about my fitness journey is that what you told me, it's, it's simple. It's not easy, but it's simple. Eat right, train. Yeah. Th that's, that's it. I came up with an acronym, SET. You know, we always use the word SET when we're working out. Do a SET and a yeah. rep. Sleep, eat, and train. That's it. If you're sleeping and recovering, especially now that we're getting older, getting older. recovery is very important. Then if you're eating the right foods in the right amounts and you're mm -hmm. training according to your abilities, mm -hmm. and like you said, you're an athletic guy. I mean, on the set of Batman Dead End, you're flying around all over the place. I'm watching you. I'm like, I love this dude. I love a director. I love anyone, a coach a mentor that gets in the weeds and gets in the and dirt And is going to do it with you yeah. instead of just barking it at you. Right, yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't think people have any respect for, you know, like a coach, for example. When mm -hmm. I coach football right over around the corner here, sure. I, I would run the sprints with the kids. Sure. And the kids would be like, oh, crap, this old guy's pretty fast run. still. Yeah, and yeah. I, now I'm going to run too. Instead of yeah. some out-of-shape coach standing on the sideline, one more, one more. Yeah. It's like, come on, yeah. bro. you got to be able to show. Show and tell. Yeah and, and, yeah, and you did that. So what would your encouragement be to people? Because obviously that's what I do, right? You mm -hmm. know that. I help people get in shape. What would your encouragement be in being a guy that was once out of shape and got into shape? You say it's simple, but it's not easy. How could you encourage somebody to get started today, right? Because it's a matter of life and death for a lot of people. Well, instead of eating that candy bar or the ice cream, eat a carrot. Have a nice steak. Make yourself a bowl of rice. Uh, put some uh, shredded chicken on it. And eat, eat something healthy instead of putting something crappy in your mouth. If you want to eat ice cream or you want to eat a candy bar, I remember another thing you told me, eat the real stuff. Eat real sugar. Don't, don't eat the sugar-free crap. If, if you feel you've earned it, and you feel that you want to have ice cream, eat ice cream. Don't Full eat- Full fat ice cream, the yeah. whole dip. Yep. yep. Like full fat milk with your cereal, if you're going to do that, whatever. Um, that and just, you know, it, it, I think we, we all fail to a certain degree. And we all have those mornings where you know you, you, you want to wake up and you should be in the gym and you're not. And I think this is just me. You're asking me, yeah, right? I, I think it's important, especially as we get older, to not beat yourself up when you're not doing it. Acknowledge it and right. say, I should have trained today. 
You know, my wife woke up early. She went to the gym. I stayed home and did emails. You know, I should have went to the gym. Um, but take that and use it as energy and use it as inspiration for tomorrow. Right. You know, um, that and just, you know, everything you've ever told me or any advice you've always given me has been succinct to the point and very brief. It's just, this is what you got to do. And I think a lot of people see a guy like you, especially now at your age, and they go, what's the secret? You know, you got to tell me what you do. Sleep, eat, train. That's it. Pretty simple. There is, no, there is nothing else. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everybody wants to think there's like a magic potion or a, or a, or a magic formula to anything in life, making a movie or, or keeping in shape. There isn't. You just got to do the work. You got to right. put the work in. So let's talk about that, making a movie and doing the work, because you decided one day, like people will decide to get on a fitness journey, you decided one day that you wanted to make a movie. You're a Batman fan, and you said, I want to make a Batman movie. Tell me, like, what was going on in your mind when you sat there with this idea, with this thought? Because a lot of people have ideas. A lot of people want to do things, but... Most people don't ever put it into action. And that's the difference between you and everybody else that wants to make a Batman fan film, right? Like, I got an idea. I want to do this. And you even did it when people told you you were crazy. People that you love and people that you respect. Steve Wayne. Henry, yeah. Steve. Uh, the list goes on. But you did it anyway. So what was going on in your mind and how did you take that action? And let's move into this whole Batman thing. Well, firstly... I, we, at that point in time, we were coming off of Val Kilmer and George Clooney in rubber suits with nipples. And so the timing was right for me to bring the Batman that I loved and grew up with in the comics to life. And I thought the only way to do that was to find a big buff dude and put him in a spandex suit and do it like it like it looks in the comics. And that had never been done on film with the exception, as you know, of the goofy 60s TV show, you know, which they weren't trying to do it serious or dark. So, um, and yeah, I mean, like I, you, you said it, there were people in our own camp that even Mac to a degree, our costume designer was like, I, you hear him say it in the documentary. I, he's like in the beginning, I don't know if this is going to work, man. Because he'd worked on those suits in those movies. And, and another thing that I think is important to say is that when you look at those suits, especially the, the last two, it was ba uh, Batman Forever and Batman and Robin, those suits made by Jose Fernandez and, and the Bat Shop and, and Mike Mack, and they are brilliant works of art in and of themselves. They are beautiful suits you've seen them you've held the cowls in your hand mm -hmm. they're 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 beautiful they're just not right i wanted to do it right that's the first thing second thing is it's perfect question about like you know you when you say you actually went and did it my wife and i went and saw the premiere of a friend's film just the other day and it was pretty awful. The film was <laughs> bad. It was a bad movie. Just no other way to say it. Horrible. But I went up to this guy who is uh, the uh, brother-in-law of a, of, of a really good friend of mine, really close friend. And it was important for me to be there for him because he would respected my work and so forth. And I went up to him. And I put my arm around him. And I, we, were at, we were at dinner afterwards. And I you know, gave him a hug. And I gave him some words of wisdom. And when I got back to the table, my friend Spencer said, what did you, what did you tell Javier? What did you whisper in his ear? And I said, hey man, you know, I've been in this industry 30 years and I hear a lot of this. So I don't see a lot of that. You made a movie, dude. Good, bad, or indifferent. You Start made a movie. to finish. It's got a beginning, a middle, and an end. And it's up there. And nobody can ever take that away from you. Be proud of it. Do better next time, but be proud of that, man. You went and you actually did it. You put your money where your mouth was and you did it. 
And I think he was surprised to hear that because, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I don't think he was, you know, because he asked me to be honest and, you know, that's my honest opinion. I don't, I don't care if it's, if it's not such a great movie, you're a young man who got off your butt and you went and you did it. And I, and I, and I respect that. Right. You know, which by the way, buddy, the podcast support dog is farting. If you smell anything, it's not me. It's, it's, Mm -hmm. it's the dog. Well, you know, I've been known for that. We both have. Yeah. But I I prefer to do it in a gym in front of, you know, orange (laughs) County housewives. All right. So anyway, you set out to make this movie. You want a buff, fit, athletic guy that can perform like the Batman should perform. Is it true that you went out and you looked at bunch uh, like a bunch of bodybuilders and you weren't we really? We did. So talk about that for a second. Well, we got we got some magazines and uh, you know looked at some of these bodybuilders uh, in of that time and you know I believe Christian Boving's name came up and Mike O'Hearn and there, you know there were some other um, just you know your goals, Jim. You know, the Callum Von Mogers of the day, right. you know, um, and uh, whose card was it that I, I Jason read? Ellis. Jason Ellis was the guy's name. And I contacted him and, and he was a, a photographer that had worked with you many times and had shot your photo for all those covers and stuff. And uh, I said, hey, you know, you got to know somebody that good looking dude yoked. You know, and he's like, yeah, I know a lot of good looking dudes joke. What are you looking for? I was like, ah, you know, six foot, six, two, you know, two, 200 pounds, 220, you know, big, big dude, you know, that'll told him I was making a Batman movie. I need somebody to fill out that costume. And then, you know, you came in and I saw you and uh, it's just one of those things in life, right? Like you just. You, you like we're doing right now we're looking into each other's eyes and you just know right i'm like that's him but, but before even though you, i was before five, you eight, read and 190 pounds yeah even the, <laughs> but you just but, but before you read any of the yeah. lines or we ran lines or anything i just knew like you get that feeling and then after you know a couple of just spending some time with you and talking with you it's like you know what? I could I could get this guy to follow me through fire. Like I, he's he's gonna he's got that energy, that good energy, you know. And at that point, for me, and this is something that I don't talk about a lot, but I had sort of a revelation, which was like, you know, body wise, and and we, we you and I have spoken about this. You know, you weren't six two two twenty. You know, you were a little smaller than that. But if I do my job and shoot you the way I know I can shoot you and make you look, all I got to do is get the performance out of you. Now, does that mean I didn't sit you down and say, hey, dude, put on as much weight as you can before we start shooting, which you did. You put on what, 16, 18 pounds? Yeah, I put on, yeah, I was not ripped. But... You, you know, when we when we finally got you in that costume, you know, it was like, okay, if we get him in some shoes that have a little bit of, you know, lift on them and, you know, if I get really creative with the camera and the angles and stuff, which was on me to do. Right. Um, yeah, I, I think, I mean, I could say with all confidence, I think anybody who was not in the know, you know, like who was not on the set, watches that movie and there's no way they could tell you're you know you weren't that big of a dude right so what about stallone so let's let's talk about stallone being in the part Mm because i'll tell people that and i think there's even a little hint to it in the making of batman dead end so if you haven't figured out yet what we're talking about yeah we're talking about batman dead end it's a short film that sandy came up with and reached out to me through jason ellis like you just heard and wanted to create this image of what Batman should be based upon his lifelong obsession with comics and comic books and life, you know, live action creation of this sort of stuff, which he was able to bring to life and put on film. So at one point, you couldn't find the bodybuilder. You mm-hmm. needed an actor. What I remember you telling me, Sly was kind of in between stuff. He really wasn't working. And you had the balls to reach out to him and say, hey, let me, let me try 
Let me try Sylvester Stallone, see if he's available. Yeah, that was an interesting story because he was in that little funk, that little transition between it was before he made It's like First Blood and Rocky. Well, no, he he'd he'd come off Rocky Five. He was looking to make another Rocky movie. It was before John Rambo. It was before The Expendables. It was before, I think the wording I used in the documentary was it was before he, you know, rose from the ashes like the Phoenix he so brilliantly did. He had basically had two careers. So I caught him in that middle to where he wasn't doing anything. And he actually told me that he'd do it. And then at the very last moment, Henry Alvarez, myself, a few other people were in a van with alginate, plaster bandage, director's chairs. We were on our way up to his home in Benedict Canyon. And he called me on my little tiny Motorola uh, flip phone. And he says, hey, kid, I got some bad news. Uh, I can't I can't do it, man. I talked to my agent, my manager, and... and the rest is history, as they say. I mean, we got into this little argument, and you know, I was like, I told "So you were you going to tell. life cast his face to make yes. the cow, just that like point. we did for you." Yeah, we were on our way to his house to do that. Did Henry already kind of sculpt one in his thing? Because I remember he did in, a maquette. He did a small one. Yeah, because you could see the lips and the cow, and I'm like, "That that's he, he took he took." Uh, a portrait I had done okay. of Stallone as Rambo, did a clay pour, poured clay into the mold, ah. and then sculpted the cowl over that. Because I was always wondering what yeah. that, that's where what that, that came is. from. Yeah, that's yeah. Henry. You know, I I said, hey, pour up a, you know, one of those busts and just throw the cowl on it real quick. That way I could show Stallone, like, hey, this is what you'd look like in the cowl. And he loved it. And he thought, you know, he, I, I, he, I thought he believed in me. And I think he did. You- and, and I, 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 you know, and I, he probably would have done it if he would have not spoken to his management and not did everything I told him not to do. Uh, but, you know, I, look. It these, worked out. These, these people have millions of dollars and, you know, like much more to lose than, than I do, certainly. So, um I mean, it, it was hard to understand at the time. And to say that I wasn't pissed off would be a lie because <laughs> I was very pissed off. But like you said, look, you know, in the end, people ask me all the time, you know, w- if he would have done it, I wouldn't change a fucking thing. I played the part that Stallone didn't. How many people can say that, that I got to play the part that Sylvester Stallone did And I didn't. think you did it better than he ever could have. Exactly. As good as he is, and as much as I love the guy, and as much of a hero to me, I could say he is, I don't think he would have quite well, taken it. Plus, it would have been Stallone in Batman. People There's no separating. People would have been judgmental of it. It, 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 would, it, they would, it. They would. It, it, it spoke so much louder with you because you were Batman. He's Sylvester Stallone. So... To me, I always look at it as like, I didn't make it with Sylvester Stallone, but I made it with Bruce Wayne. Like I had, I had Batman, right. you know? Um, and I'll tell you, dude, I, I, she could tell you, I mean, all my friends, anybody I've ever worked with on any set, people that ask me for advice, I say, if you can get actors that believe in you and believe in your vision and will do anything for you, like I said, will follow you through fire, you're you're unstoppable like it's like you're you're it's you're not gonna not make something cool well and Um, that was the case it was it was me and you and everybody else that was there but i knew when i needed something i knew where i needed to go and i knew if something was happening it it i just had 100 percent confidence in you you know when you were jumping off that roof and everybody's like all right enough we got it we got it i'd pull you aside and be like you got one more in you you got one more. You're like, let's go. Yeah. Let's go. It's, it wasn't even a question. Yeah. You know, everybody else is shitting their pants. Like, you know, it's 15 feet in the air, dude. You know, and, the, and I, you know, I, I wouldn't even, I, I would just look at you. Ready to go again? Go again? You know, all I had to do was look up. You're like, got it, boss. Yeah. You I'd know, go and, jump and, off that and, bitch and, right and, now. And, for you. Yeah, we got it. <laughs> you know? One of the greatest moments for me was 
you know, Sandy at one point told me, okay, here's what needs to happen. Like he's a great director and he's given me all this direction in coaching. He said, you need to become the Batman. I need you to be Batman. Do you understand what Bartram, I'm saying? Man. You're not Clark Bartram anymore. The minute you put that cowl on, you are no longer Clark Bartram. I'm like, I got it. I got it. And then he keeps telling me, okay, okay. I'm like, I got it. I got it. I'm... So this whole day is going on. We're getting ready to shoot. And all of a sudden, it just it, it's loud in there, and then it's just getting quieter and quieter the closer we're getting to walking out on set and shooting it. And Mac is there, and he's getting me all ready, and his joking is starting to slow down and not be as much as it was because he knows, all right, we got to transition into this time that you got to get settled in. All it. been waiting for, like all this money's been spent, all these monsters have been made, all this time and energy and. It's coming down to this moment. a lot of rubber in that room. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's happening. But everybody knew, right? There's like this reverence that was just starting to happen. And this energy was just starting to build. And I felt it myself. And I'm like, oh, man. And, and he's putting all this stuff on me. And then I remember Sandy saying, the minute you put that cowl on, you are Batman. So that thing goes over my head. And he puts it on. And poof, I open my eyes. And I'm like, this is it. Let's fucking go. And then and he walks up to me for one last bit of direction. And I'm just looking at him. I said, you know what's up first, right? We're going to go up here. We're going to, and then we're going to move down here. You know, just... Do you, you know what I'm saying? And then just. Okay. So I, I don't know where you went off and I see Anita. And I said, Hey, I said, is Clark okay? What are you talking about? I said, I just did, did the first shots up here in two minutes here. And I'm telling him, you know, and he just ignored me and w walked off. And she's like, you aren't talking to Clark. That's Batman. And I just remember I was like, you motherfucker, he got me. It's like, you know, I was like, but I was stoked. And I was like, uh, you, you know, it, it was you, 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 you settled into it quite well i would say yeah and that whole thing it carried out right so i walked past you and that's Clark, when i was your knees walking bleeding. out you're all we, we gotta get that no 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 let's go let's look at it that, later that, get adds, it later. that adds to it man <laughs> but we walked out right and then everything is there and the rain's coming down and all that and then everybody on set was being all loud the minute i walked was. out instant like literal pin drop you quiet. could hear the rain it was so yeah. quiet and then all of a sudden i heard someone go that's batman oh my god they're whispering, and I'm just like, oh, crap. And, and it built up more in me. Yeah. The more that got quiet and dark and, and cold and Green, wet and all that yeah, stuff, yeah. it made it come inside of me more and more. And I was like, okay, let's go. Let's do this. And literally, I did. Dude, like, you, were, you were carrying that entire movie on your shoulders. It, it, you, know? you, you and me, basically. Yeah. Like, you... You were you were carrying that movie on your shoulders, like so. You, how much everybody money? Everybody was looking up to you, right? You know? Well, I mean, rightfully, right? It was my job to do that, yeah. and and I took it seriously. And that's one you thing did. that I do you in did. everything that I do is I take you it serious. Do. I showed up in, to all in every that. role, right? Yeah, you, you have to. Otherwise, you're kind of wasting people's time and money. Yeah. So, with that being said, you invested all of your own money. You mm -hmm. sold comic books and different things that you've collected throughout the years. Some to, movie memorabilia. And stuff. Right, to, to make your dream. Mm -hmm. What would your encouragement, you, you said it a minute ago, basically with your friend who made a movie that wasn't so good, but he actually did it. There are a lot of young kids out there with phones and ideas and wanting to create something. Other than taking action and just getting out there and doing it, what would your encouragement as a director and someone who's had success on many levels in the industry, what would you say to them to get started and get moving? Well, now that the industry has changed so much, uh, I think the advice that I would have given somebody in 2003, as opposed to now, has also, would all, is also changing. Um, and that advice would be, don't lean on the technology. Don't let the technology be what makes the movie you make your movie the camera is just a tool i would have batman dead end would have been what it had been whether we shot it on an iphone or the panavision millennium which is what we shot it on but you know it, it i just think when you have a vision that's that strong 
it's going to translate through whatever medium you decide to. I mean, we were the on Hunter Prey. We were the first ones to get. I mean, they gave us three red cameras and said, here, go beat these things up. I don't think they had any idea what we were going to give back to them. <laughs> you know, these, uh, you know, destroyed camera bodies, basically. But I mean, it, it's just. Don't don't let the technology be what drives you right you drive the technology you push the technology and make it work for your project yeah you know what i mean it's just and one I tool think, i think i think a lot of people get lost in the fact that yeah you can make a movie on an iphone and cut it on your laptop and all, you can do that yeah but don't let that sort of you, you know drive you you right. know uh because just because you know you have an iphone and you have a laptop doesn't necessarily mean you should be making movies either exactly so we're going to talk more about another movie hunter prey when we come right back from this little break so hold, hold on when was the last time you had blood work done now i'm specifically talking to men because i know most women are going to take care of their health but men for some reason don't want to go to the doctor and the guys that I talk to in my coaching program typically haven't had their blood work done in a while. Let me tell you something. It's so important to understand what's going on in your blood. That's the only thing that can tell you where you're lacking in nutrients, what might be happening in your life that will never be figured out otherwise. So this is the reason I've created a relationship with Merrick Health. Now, what we're going to do when you click on the link in the show notes is get you set up to have your blood work done. It's as simple as filling out a form and then going off to a, a lab core or one of the places that we would send you in your town, local to you, takes you a few minutes. Listen, schedule it into your life because it's that important. I have a discount for, code for you. It's Clark. Just put that into the thing. You're going to save some money and you're going to go get your blood work done. We're going to find out what's going on in your life. And hopefully there's nothing to be concerned about, but you won't know until you get it done. So fill out the form. Book it and make it happen. All right. So you had mentioned Hunter Prey. Are you done with anything else you want to say about Batman Dead? I mean, like we could do an entire hour, but both Sandy and I have talked about this many <laughs> times. Awesome. Lauren has heard these stories over and over again. She's like, ah, but you know, there are a lot of people out there who've not heard any of the stories and they don't even, maybe they've not seen Hunter Prey. I, I'll tell you a quick story. I had a young man on here who flew out a couple weeks ago to be on the podcast with me. And he brought his little crew with him mm -hmm. of cameramen and talk about height and all of that sort of thing. He had, he pulled his jacket off and he had a Batman shirt on. And I said, Oh, you're a Batman fan. He's like, yeah. And I'm like, Oh, you ever seen Batman dead end? He's like, yeah, man, the thing was great. And I'm like, well, do you know who I am? He's like, yeah, you're Clark Bartram. And I'm like, well, I'm, I'm the Batman in that. And he's like, and instantly it just changes. The guy starts to just fanboy out and geek out. He's like, oh my God, oh my God. And then he just gives me the old Patrick Swayze and Roadhouse thing. He's like, I thought you'd be bigger. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's yeah, like, yeah. damn, I get that all the time. Yeah. But he was blown away. He was absolutely in shock. And he was so, I mean, he instantly got on the phone. He's like, man, I'm with the Batman from Batman Dead End. So his whole crew, everybody just loved it. Mm -hmm. It's, and I'll tell you another funny story that remember what was the guy's name dave david that worked in warner art department dave williams dave williams yeah the guy that made the card for when we did world's finest yes yeah. yes yeah. good good buddy of mine so i remember dave came great to great comic-con and he said hey i just you, there were like all these pictures of you and warner brothers and and the dvd of dead end was in there on the conference table and christian bale was in there and he left holding the thing yeah. the dvd and I remember when you had sent me the DVD for the animated series and said, study this voice. And I sat there with Mitch and we we're just going over and over it again. Kevin, the late Kevin Conroy. The late Kevin Conroy. Yeah. yeah and, rest in peace. And I told, uh, so Anita is at the Oscars and she's standing in line behind someone, mm -hmm. tall guy, whatever. And all of a sudden this guy turns around, Christian Bale. And she is just in shock. She's like, oh my God, it's Christian Bale standing in front of me. Mm -hmm. And he's kind of, you know, talking to chatting her, her up, just chatting yeah. her up, you know, yeah. doing his thing. She looked beautiful, yeah. of course. And 
She said, Clark, I didn't know what to say. I'm like, out of everybody, <laughs> out of in everybody that place, in that place, yeah. you had the one thing to say that he that, would have geeked out on. Yes. yes. My husband was the Batman that and you copied you the voice. Study. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. you didn't do a really good job at it, yeah. to, is, you know, as far as I'm concerned. But that, that to me was super funny. Any anything that she else? Choked. That she, she I choked. She just choked. I'm like, you had Christian Bale. I'm like, I'm so mad at you right now for not telling him that you know for a fact he had the DVD and he copied your husband's voice, yeah, man. Absolutely. You would have been best friends with him. You probably would have got his phone number and we could have hung out. Hung out. Yeah. Oh, that's just so blew funny. It. Just whiffed on that one. <laughs> how how funny is it that after we make Dead End? Every single Batman movie that has come out since is all dark and rainy and gritty. And but you know what? They still haven't done it right. The suit is still sculpted rubber bullshit. And I don't get it because Bale had the body. Affleck had the body. Jesus Christ, it's right there. What? Oh, it's just, the fans want it, they, you, you know that. It's just, you know, what, what is it? What, dude, they won't tell me. What, is, what do you think it is? Why, why do you think they won't go that way? Well, here's what I know for sure. Here's I, what we did. So they're sculpting these suits. They got to be spending tens of thousands of dollars to create these hundreds suits. Hundreds of thousands. Hundreds of thousands of dollars to Mac create these was, rubber was suits. Done it. Yeah. So here's what we did. At the time, I had a contract with Under Armour. Nobody I, knew what it was back no then. No one knew what Under Armour was, and they were sending First me free time clothes. I heard of it. Yes. So Sandy's looking for these clothes all over the place, and I'm like, hey, there's this company sending me free clothes. It's called Under Armour, and they're skin tight, man. He's like, get some of it. So he's, he gets they some of it. But they didn't make gray. They didn't make gray. So he's like, get a white one and I'll we'll dye it. it. So they give me, send me all this Under Armour stuff and I give it to Sandy. Next thing I know, we have these gray. So anyone that watched Batman Dead End, that's all Under Armour that I'm wearing in some Speedos, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Speedo. Yeah. The black Speedos. And that was it, man. So we took a free outfit that a company that was just barely trying to get on the map sent me because I was... At the time, an influencer before influencers were, were a thing. influencers. Yeah, I was getting yeah. on magazine covers. Yeah. That was yeah. the influence. Yep, and we did it for nothing. And true Batman fans really want that because that's what it is, man. He's what just it looks like in the comics. There you go. Just a body under a skin tight suit, able to move and fight and roll and hit walls and jump off buildings and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's that's what makes him Batman. Yeah, you know. So, but why? But why do you? That doesn't answer the question. Because they're trying to spend money, I think. They're trying to justify a budget, and they're just doing all of these things that they think people want that they actually probably don't want. Maybe there's a separate suit that you know Batman would put on in a special occasion for... Well, in BVS, you know, he he puts the armor right. suit on like he does in Dark Knight. Yeah. You so, know, I mean... I, I really don't know. I think it's a justification just to spend a shit ton of money on something that you could do for $40,000. And do it really well, you know? So eight minutes, you multi... So was it 40 grand you spent? 35. $35,000 for eight minutes of film. So you multiply that to get 90 minutes of film. You know, we could do the same thing that Hollywood's doing for way less than a million dollars, <laughs> you know, back then. But it ain't happening now. I really do... Like when you said to me, this was 20... 20 years 20 ago. 20 years this ago. July, it'll be 20 and it was years. one of the first viral videos, May. right, on YouTube as well, May. right? YouTube wasn't quite out yet. It was still that, like, um, I forget the actual name of the server that was used before YouTube, but it was, it was, a, it was, it was a put locker kind of thing where they just, they uploaded files and then you, you downloaded it from there. Um, you, you you hear me say it in one of the interviews. Remember, mm -hmm. I said it's already on. Yeah. Um, yeah, I forget the name of the service. But then the following year in 2004, that was the birth of 
YouTube. YouTube. And Batman Dead End was one of the things that went viral that first. Launch YouTube. Yeah. It's, that's crazy to think, right? That it was that long ago. And I remember Sandy telling me after we had wrapped and he had this idea to do another one, Dark Knight Returns, when Batman gets older, he's kind of coming out of retirement. He's like, dude, when you turn 50, you need to be in shape. Can you stay in shape till you're 50 years old? And Dude, I'm like, I'll I, be fine. I, Don't worry uh, about that. That's all I could think about. I was I thinking was it was guys. that that was so far away, right? And that was only like 10 or six, maybe eight years later that that would have been. I can't remember even, well, if it was 20 years ago, well, I'm 60, he, how I was 40. Old, I think he's 60 in Dark Knight. Okay. Isn't he? In, in, in Frank Miller's Dark Knight Returns, yeah, he's, he's like 60 years old. He's so got the beard. Now it's time. It's yeah. perfect. I shaved mine today. I had no, a you bit could do it. I'm, I'm sitting here looking at I'm you. Ready you to could go. go shoot right now. I'm, I'm, I'm in physically capable to do all of those stunts and everything again. You could go shoot right now. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking at you. Right. You, like you could do it. So anyone have any money, they want to fund this thing or anyone know anyone in Hollywood. There was a guy in Japan that I was talking to for a while that uh, some wealthy guy over there who just wanted to see you in the cow again and there was talk you know he was gonna but you know i just i just can't do it for free anymore no. you know what i mean it's like we're all professionals now and you know to a large degree maybe that people can't see it's not very transparent but batman dead end worked it got me work it got a lot of us you know to the next level of our respective careers i mean i haven't gone on and directed like an a you know a list feature yet but you know i i worked after that you know we went and made hunter prey and that was a blast and you know even world's finest i mean and and look at the ruckus that caused they shut down you can't show fan films at comic-con anymore because they don't they were like you know what Last year we got shown up like that ain't happening again. That, that's a whole nother thing. I want to talk about that when we come back from this. We'll take a quick break. One of the number one things that I do to stay in shape year round is have my meals prepped all the time. And it's not my wife prepping them. It's not me prepping them. It's Icon Meals doing the prepping for me. They're professionals. This is what they do for a job. And let me tell you, with the discount code Clark, and the free shipping that you'll get, you probably can't make meals for the same amount of money that you will invest getting meals from Icon Meals. So here's what I want you to do. If you're interested on any level on being prepared all the time and having nutrition dialed in, head over to IconMeals.com right now, use the promo code Clark and save and see how it improves your life like it's improved mine and so many others. So head on over to iconmeals.com right now. Okay, so what were you saying now about? In 2004, the year after Dead End, after we shot World's Finest, which was the little trailer we did with Superman in it, Michael Hearn, uh, that was scheduled. We, we, we remember we had all decided that we were going to do something for the fans, we're, to say thank you right. for making this the most viewed thing ever and whatever. We don't have that much money, but we'll do a little something for you. We'll put Clark back in the cowl and we'll bring in Superman. So we do this and the same gentleman who 365 days prior had tracked us down and said, if you can get this to me, I'll play it in the masquerade in front of 5,000 people came to me and said, I got some bad news for you. I was like, what? And he said, I can't show the world's finest thing. And I said, why not? He says, Warner Brothers, Lucasfilm, they all got together and said no more fan films wow. at San Diego Comic-Con. So as a business, the San Diego Comic-Con was no longer allowed to show fan films. And to this day, you cannot show a fan film at the San Diego Comic. We were the last ones. And I'm telling you, I, I had literally no idea. Five, how many people get to show their work in front of 5,000 people? That, no, that, that, even before that, the smaller room, was, to me, was even Dude, better. Dude, that was a couple hundred people. That was a couple. But the energy in that room, so setting up, the, all these small breakout rooms 
where people are showing their little fan films and you pass by them. There might be three or four, 12 people in there. And Sandy's looking at him. He's like, oh, I feel sorry for that guy. There's nobody in there. And then we get set Thinking up. Thinking like, that's going to be us. Yeah, like, it's going to oh be us. God. We didn't know what to happen. We had yeah. these cards. We're passing it out everywhere. And then we go into this room and we're, the, we're sitting in there waiting for people to show up. And then all of a sudden the room fills up and Sandy comes walking into me. He's like, dude, come here. I got to show you something. Come here right now. And outside. the look on his face was completely different. It went from, is anyone going to come into this room to come and look and see what's outside of this room? So I walk out around the corner, no there's BS. There's footage of this. Yeah, there's footage. No BS. You turn the corner, line, as far as, as, you can far see. as it goes. Mm -hmm. And we're walking down. We got a camera crew, Sandy, and we're walking down just staring at people. They had no idea who I was. They had no idea who had, I was. <laughs> yeah, they had no idea what they were going to go watch. They'd, they'd seen that little black and white picture yep. of you on the building yep. that was on the back of that card. And that was That's it. That's all they'd seen. And that room was packed to capacity. And I'm sitting in the middle like this. And it starts. And again, the whole, I'm getting chills. The whole room goes completely silent. You hear boom, boom. And then the scene where the Batman jumps down in the cape, that whole thing. Everybody went crazy. People went absolutely batshit crazy. No pun intended. Nuts. Nuts. And then the thing ended, and talk about going batshit crazy, he com almost lost his mind, went <laughs> completely nuts, went absolutely nuts up on the stage screaming and yelling. I'm still sitting there like, Guilty as what wrong. just happened? What happened here? Then we go up and we're sitting on the panel, and then the guy comes in, he's like, man, there's, we got to do this again. So they He's like, never the mind up. the panel, I could show it one more time yeah. if you can get everybody out. And they brought another couple of hundred people in and they showed it again. And then it was, what, a couple hours after that where that guy, Jeff, tracked us down. He goes, You're, you guys are the Batman people. We're like, I guess. Yeah. And he's like, you, you, you got to get me this thing. We'll, we'll play it in the masquerade. And that, I mean, talk about a dream come true, dude. 5,000 people standing on the chairs. Standing up on chairs, going nuts. And I'm in the back, and it's me and Patrick, Patrick McGee. You know, he's seven feet tall and I'm standing there next to him. No one still has a clue who I am, no. except for one guy. The, the whole, guy in the bathroom. The guy in the bathroom. <laughs> the thing ends. I come in there, man, and, and uh, the guy, I said something to him and he's like, you're Batman. And I was just he's like, like you're, the oh, Batman. Yeah, you're the Batman. I'm like, oh shit, this is weird, man. Uh, and then they let, let me back in and it was nuts, man. But anyway, that was fun. We did great. When Who knows, we might... If if all everything aligns itself again, I want to do it. I know. I want to do it. I can already see it right now. Like I have this vision, and I shared with you what it is, and you have a vision for how it would look. But you know, Bruce laying there in oh. bed, just with a white sheet on him, you can see his body and a little bit of blood on the sheet or whatever, and he's beat up. And Alfred comes in and says, "You know, we, we need time, to talk. Time yeah. to go. <laughs> time to go." And he just pulls the thing off and he's just shredded with freaking cuts on him. And he just beard, you know, and just kind of like. Hand you the razor. <sighs> yep. Here we go. Yep. Boom. And it's just boom, the dark night returns. You know, oh. that'd be bad. But Hunter Prey. Could you imagine how crazy? It would oh, be? that'd be go nuts. It'd go nuts. I, I'm ready to make it Warner Brothers tonight. Warner Brothers would that's fine. We'd go to jail for oh. doing something that was fun. Yeah. So anyway, we do another movie together and he reaches out to me and I wasn't, you know, the chosen one for that. He'd, Sandy had to fight for me again. Yeah, I don't role. I don't want to put anything right. on, you know, poor Simon because he's, you know, yeah. may he rest in peace as well. Right. Um, but you had, uh, it's, had it's, other it's guys just, chosen for that part anyway. That, well, no, because they were putting pressure on me to use a, like a named name actor. actor. You know, because remember, it was their money too. Yeah. Uh, so I couldn't just tell him to go fuck off. You know I mean? I, I was like, I didn't want to be forced into that, but yeah, we had, we had met with a few people until, you know, what was that I, guy's name from three o'clock high? Richard Tyson, Richard Tyson. Yeah. Yeah. We had him, but then his manager was kind of being a, a, a dickhead. And, and he's like, you, you know, I've, I've been in this business a long time. You can't fool me. You, you, you can't do all these effects and all this for $300,000. It's like, have you seen Batman Dead End? Have you seen my commercial reel? Yeah. Have you seen what I do with no money? Like, 
anyway, so it was just, I just remember that afternoon and I just, you know, it was me and Simon and I was like, I think I said, well, give me, other than this whole name actor thing, give me one good reason why I can't have Clark. One good reason. And he couldn't come up with anything. Remember we were meeting at Jerry's Deli up there and you were talking to that Richard Tyson in like on the phone in the parking lot. We were meeting about something else. You don't remember it? And Britney no. Spears was there. It was around the Britney Spears breakdown time. And I, I stepped away. That. Yeah, I stepped away. And I was sitting there on a phone call. You were in, and Simon were in a booth. And I uh -huh. stepped away. And I look down. And I see these feet below me. And I'm on the phone. And I look up. And it's Britney Spears standing right in front of me. And she's just staring at me. And I'm like, can I help you? And she's like, where's the bathroom? Where's the bathroom? And I'm like, it's, it's right there. So she scurries off and goes to the bathroom. I'm like, dude, Britney Spears just asked me where the bathroom was at. And then all of a sudden, that photographer guy comes in behind her. He's like looking oh, around. Oh, the paparazzi Yeah, the paparazzi yeah, yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I remember. Now yeah. I remember. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. she's You're in the bathroom, that dude. That way. She's yeah. in the bathroom. So then I come back. I'm like, dude, Britney Spears just came up and just stand and asked me where the bathroom was. So then we come outside, and I'm on the phone still. Car comes screeching around the corner and right in front of me. And I'm like, my buddy's like, dude, what's going on? I'm like, Britney Spears almost ran over me just now. He's yeah. like, what are you, in a trailer park? <laughs> that was his response to me. I'm like, no, I'm at Jerry's Deli in Hollywood. <laughs> so anyway, that was one of the precursor meetings to Hunter Prey, which was so fun and I knew, so hard. <laughs> I knew I, I, that, you know, the, the this had to be somebody we knew. Like, I, I couldn't. You know, I couldn't go out there and do that with somebody that I didn't know. That wasn't going to follow me through the fire. You know what I mean? Is like I followed you through the you fire on that one, bro. You were always the guy that was like, you know, like when the little mutinies like started to happen, you were like, what are you guys talking about? We got to get behind Sandy and finish his movie. You know, like that's the guy you want, you know, like you, that's the guy you want to work with, you know, and, and, uh. Yeah, I had, I had mean, one that, meltdown on that thing. That was and, a hard shoot, dude. And, and but I was there for you. Yeah, I was, I was there for you. You were there for me. Oh yeah. And, if it wasn't, for, we, it yeah that that was crazy. So we have what? There were twenty people on the cast. Twenty five. Twenty five people on the cast, all living in one home with one bathroom. One bathroom, food three hours away, and it was one hundred and fifteen degrees, sandstorms every night. Everything that could go wrong. Sandy had mentioned the cameras earlier. We had the best cameras that were made at the time. The red one. The, the red we, ones. We were the first science fiction film to shoot on the red one. And those things were overheating every, literally remember, every five packs. minutes. Remember, we ice, had packs ice packs on top of them. I would just start getting into the thing and then be like, oh, camera's overheating. Yep. <laughs> you have to stop. Get it the was, other body that was in the cooler. I think this is the Jaws story, right? Like how Jaws almost didn't get made because of all the crap. I think we probably. Yeah, but Jaws was a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, th you know, this was a watchable well, movie. I, I just say Jaws was a successful <laughs> movie. Uh, this was a successful movie too, but it just got hijacked by the wrong people. That's a whole different conversation. You know that guy went, that, that guy Julio yeah. Caro went to jail yeah. for seven years. Yeah, good for him. For smuggling money. Yeah. You, our money. I should have our been money. getting residual. Yeah. I got one residual check. But anyway, we did a Hunter Prey. It's a movie called Hunter Prey. It's a science fiction thriller. We shot in Mexico, in Puerto Cidos, Mexico, way down south of the border there and what stays south of the border it's it stays there that was the i see damien online all the time but i played three parts in that movie okay. and it was there was one scene in particular there that i had to be trained for there was this mask that i had on and there was these cords that had to go down my throat and sandy's like man i need to teach you how to get this stuff down there and i was like you know you have to shut off your gag reflex yeah. and i remember Hearing the conversation after I did that scene, I got into character again, pulled that, pulled that mask off, pulled those things out of my throat. And then I heard someone say, yeah, dead. when he screamed, it overmodulated. It, no, it, it, you, what you did was you screamed so loud, you capped the, where the volume. Yeah, it overmodulated on and it, it. And it, yeah. and it made like some kind of, 
And I heard you guys whispering in the background, like, like, he's got to do it again. Dude, we got to clean all the sand off. There's sand all over those things. Now, the next time they're going down my throat, they had sand on them and gritty. And it was just like, okay, here we go again. But I did it, you know, and and that's what you do. And you would have did it again. I I would have done it again. But we ended up having a fun movie. And it's if you've never seen it, go watch it. Hunter Prey. That's on YouTube too. It's it's on YouTube. You can check it out. It's it's fun, you know. And I figured out how to be an actor sitting there, just talking to myself. Had my script in my side of my pocket. I would walk off by myself. Everyone was like, "Where's Clark going?" You're like, "Dude, he's out studying his script, man." And I still have everyone's signature on that thing. I like when you that that scene where you shoot the rock and it boom. Yeah. And it's like, that. Yeah. <laughs> Little Harrison Ford. Right there. So we've had some fun doing some stuff together, man. And I really appreciate your belief in me. I just want to tell you that right now that Absolutely. that's what it takes, right? You have to, cause you went out on the line. I remember when Simon said, are you sure? And you're like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm a hundred percent positive that this is the guy. Well, there was that day on the set, right? We were what, three or four days in the shooting and he came up to me on the side of the trailer and uh, he was kind of choked up. I'm getting choked up. And he, and he, 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 you know, he looked at me and he says, you know what? And you know how hard it was for that guy to admit he was wrong. He was like, you were right. He's killing it. He's perfect. And I was like, you know, I don't want to say I told you so. <laughs> but um, yeah, he, he has since passed on. And Andrew is gone. Henry is gone. Yeah, so let's talk about the. So this cowl has a special place. I put that there Mm because it means so much to me, and there's only so many of those that exist. Yeah, there's what four. Yeah, and I remember the day you pulled me aside and you didn't tell me what it was for. You were just taking photos, like up close. I remember Henry standing there and you're standing there, and he's just taking photos of up close in my face, and you're like, "It's a surprise." It's a surprise. I don't want to tell you what it is. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know who Henry was or the level of his involvement, badassery in Hollywood and his involvement in your life. Because look, I just got thrown into this thing, yeah. right? Jason Ellis called me up and said, hey, there's this Batman movie. You should do it. I said, well, what's the, what's the description? He's like, he, he read it off. I said, Jason, you, did you tell him I'm 5'8 and I'm not 6'2? He's like, just go do it. Yeah. Just go do it. Go meet the guy. Go meet the guy. And I'm like, all right, I'll go meet the guy. And the funny story about that is the whole behind the scenes with the money part, right? (laughs) I left my house and I traded cars with my wife and I keep my wallet in my glove compartment of my car all the time. As so many of us. Yeah. And I take off and I get halfway there realizing I don't have enough gas to get home. So I thought I was going to stop off halfway at Max Muscle. First thing he asked me was to borrow 20 bucks. (laughs) I, after we were done, I, I looked at him. I said, are we done? He's like, yeah, why? I said, dude, I need 20 bucks, man. He's like, for what? I said, gas. And he's like, well, kind of slowly going to his card. wallet. I'm like, he's like, are you serious? I'm like, I'm dead serious. And he had $20. I snatch it out. I'm like, I'll pay you back tomorrow. And uh, years later, he asked me, did you do that? Is that one of those actor things, you know, to just get me like, to remember nope. you? He's like, nope, I just needed the 20 bucks. I wasn't getting home if I didn't have $20 in gas, man. No, I had nothing. But So what are you working on now? What, what can we talk about? That's- I am trying to get uh, a graphic novel project made. It's called The Circle. and um, That was going to be a movie because I remember The Circle. We it, talked about the that. The Circle was one of the movies I took out after Dead End and pitched to try and get made and it's expensive it's a big movie it, it, it gladiator meets star wars you know gladiator with creatures um so i'm gonna do a graphic novel and tell my story that way um and i just you know i it's one of those things where i have to i don't like don't take this the wrong way like but i have to start looking at the reality of how old i am you know, my own mortality and, you know, am I going to get to tell these stories or do I just want them to live in my studio on shelves? You know, like, and if I can't make movies, I'll make comic books, you know, graphic novels. So I'm going to do that. So I'm trying to raise money for that. Um, And also shallow water. I still have people looking at shallow water, like wanting to do that. Um, But again, it's just, it's just that, that, 
it's a tough road to hoe, man. There are so many, uh, you know, platforms out there now with, you know, all, all these streaming services and everything, and they're all in competition with each other. And it, it's hard, man. I mean, I, you know, I, I want to make more movies and, and to be frank, I mean, I think I'm good at it. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm certainly no worse than, you know, some of these, this crap that you see, uh, you know, and I just, I just want to tell stories. I, I just want to be, continue, uh, my life as a storyteller. Um, but I, you know, I still do, uh, you know, a lot of art. Uh, I just got married. Uh, my wife is an artist. Um, we work together on commission work and we paint and sculpt and, so I'm still doing a lot of that same stuff, but I mean, I want to get back on a set again. I, you know, but I think this, this graphic novel thing is going to be cool. Um, and I, I just, you know, again, I, you know, the, you know, the deaths of, of these people, um, you, you know, losing Henry, it was one thing. And then, you know, and Andrew and I really, you know, weren't that close, but you know, when you, you know, you're always going to have that bond with actors. Like when, when, when you're a filmmaker, you're always going to have that bond with any actor you've worked with on anything, because mm -hmm. as you know, that's a very special relationship. That's a very special bond, you know, where, you know, you, you've, you've seen me go into work mode and when we're working, we're working, you know, it doesn't mean we're still not bros, but like, we got to work. Like yeah. you've, you've, you've seen my shot list. You, how many setups do we do in a day right, compared yeah. to, you know, what they do on a Hollywood set? I mean, we're freaking cranking, you know? Um, and I, you know, I want to get back into doing that. And I, and I, you know, I, it would be great to have you along. And I, I mean, that's a given, yeah. you know, you'd be in anything I would be involved in. I, I, it's just getting them, get, you know, it's just, I'm just done spending my own money. Yeah. You no, know, and you I, 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 it's, I think I deserve someone to come along and go, Hey, you know what? You've done enough. Like here, you know, like go, go make your movie. So how can people do that? As we wrap this Follow up, how me can, on Facebook, yeah. so what you are know, your handles there? Give me just Sandy Calora on Facebook. And, uh, I have an Etsy store. It's uh, creature Arts studio. And, um, you could buy my artwork there and, um, you know, copies of my movies and stuff. And, um, you know, I mean, I, uh, these days, it's a, it's a small group of very talented people, you know, my wife included. and Which she's a very beautiful yeah, young think, lady, by I the way. I made the right choice. Yeah. What is, um, your, what is your Instagram handle so people can... It's Calora have, Studios. Calora Studios. All right. There you go. At Calora Studios. Make sure you follow C-O-L-L-O-R-A Studios. Yeah. So, but yeah, I'm doing that. And, uh, you know... Still free diving, shooting fish, and catching lobsters, and doing what I love to do on the ocean, and training when I can, and you know, staying. In, I gotta stay in shape now. I got a yeah. wife that's half my age. There so, you go. I, you know, nothing wrong with that. Got to keep that tea up, right? Got to keep that tea up. So right. that's uh, that's a whole nother. That's how that goes. whole nother discussion right there, man. But listen, brother, I'm so grateful that you came down here and Anytime. invested this time. Anytime. You know that. To do this. Yeah. Dude, just like you would do it for me, I'd do it for you. Yeah. I'm, I, you know how people say it's a three o'clock in the morning, friend. Like, I know if I call Clark Bartram, he'd be there at three o'clock in the morning. No questions asked. Absolutely. That's how we do it, man. That's how we do it. I love you, my brother. I love you too, man. I love you as well. Thank you for tuning in here to Get Busy Living with Clark Bartram. Make sure you follow me at Clark Bartram on Instagram, The Real Clark Bartram on TikTok if it's still around in a couple days, who knows. But anyway, make sure you like, follow, subscribe, all of that sort of stuff. Share this podcast with somebody that you love who might be into movies, might want to learn how to support Sandy and what he's doing. Until next time, get busy living and make it a great day. Make it a great day. You've been saying that for 20 years. Yeah. Boom. Yeah.